All right, so Resurrection of Jesus, part five. Um, we've been saying that this is a central reality of Christianity, that without the resurrection of Jesus, that we wouldn't have Christianity, that it would have been a movement, a political movement like many of that time that happened, that would have just kind of fizzled out and uh, the followers would have gone their own ways, gone back into, uh, into their regular jobs, or maybe they would have found another... Um, another leader to follow after. But Jesus did rise from the dead, and that completely turns our world upside down. And one of the things that we think about when we think about Christianity and where everything is headed, we often think, you know, one day I'm going to leave the shackles of this physical body, that this physical body is holding me back, that one day I'm going to be freed from it. One day maybe I'll be, I'll be sucked up into heaven and then we'll be in heaven for eternity where we as spiritual beings will worship God. We'll be like the angels, right? Like we will, uh, we often say, oh, so God just needed another angel. That's why so-and-so died. You know, these are all nice Kind of, kind of ideas and everything. Uh, we we often talk about the spiritual as though as it, it is opposed to the physical. That those two things are separated. But the problem with that is, is we were actually not created as spiritual beings first. We were created as physical beings first, and our spirit was breathed into us secondarily. Um, that that God loves. The physical world and that the physical world is exactly where God is at work to bring about his redemption and that when Jesus rose from the dead he did not rise as a ghost he did not appear to the disciples as a vision he came back as a physical person he came back with his own physical body right the body that was laid in the tomb was now gone you know that that means he re-enters his body and brings it back to life, right? That he goes to the disciples, even though he's able to pass through doorways, uh, through locked doors, the disciples can feel him and see him and touch him, right? Um, that Jesus eats food to prove that he is not just some kind of spirit that has appeared to them. He's not just some kind of hallucination or illusion. He is a real embodied person. And guess what? God showed how much he loved the physical creation by becoming incarnate, by putting on human flesh in Jesus. And guess what? That now, even now, Jesus is embodied in heaven. That, and we see this here in Philippians 3, 20 and 21. Paul writes to these Philippians who are encountering suffering and persecution and all kinds of difficulties. He says this, But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body to be like His glorified, glorious body by the power that enables Him to subject all things to Himself. You know, at JSU, we have this hymn that we sing very often, I'll fly away. When this mortal life is over, I'll fly away. That will leave these bodies. But that's not at all what the Scripture says. The Scripture says that our bodies, even though they're, they're subject to sickness, even though they're imperfect, even though they will break down and we will one day die, that we could get this disease from the pandemic, that all of these things are true. That one day, God is going to raise up our bodies to be like His glorious body that rose from the dead. That we, in Jesus' resurrection, when we see Jesus walking around and doing things in His resurrected body, it's a picture of what our resurrected bodies will be like. So that encourages us to take this physical world seriously to care for our bodies and not abuse them, to care for the creation around us and to not abuse it, to work to see God's redemption come here on earth as it is in heaven. That the final picture that we have at the very end of the Bible is not God wiping out the planet and bringing us up into the clouds of heaven. It is the clouds of heaven 
the glorious kingdom of God, the new heavens coming down like a bride adorned for her husband to earth, that heaven and earth will meet and be united, that we'll no longer be separated, that we will be united, and that we will live in a physical world that is even more real and tangible and beautiful and glorious than the one that we see now because it'll be free of sin, it'll be free of suffering, it'll be free of tears, it'll be free of separation. It won't be free of physicality, but our physicality will be glorified to be like Jesus' physicality that he has even now. So love this physical world. Don't see it as a burden. See it as a gift given to us from God, the God who loves the physical world enough to redeem it.